guys, welcome to another episode of Joe Knows. Today I am going to discuss how to build massive traps. This seems to be one of the most common goals among lifters to get their traps bigger, mainly because I think big traps give you that, that powerful look. You look strong when you have big traps. You look like someone who lifts weights. So it's a very common goal. It's always been one of my goals as well. But you don't see a lot of lifters walking around with well-developed traps. So obviously there's a lot of people doing something wrong. Hopefully I can help with that here today. So what I thought would be the most practical thing to do was give you my top three exercises for developing the traps. And before I give you those three exercises, I want to preface it by saying, for me, it's kind of a given that you need to be doing some kind of deadlift variation and or Olympic lifting variation if you are really serious about developing your traps. So they need to lay the foundation. You got to be doing some kind of deadlifts and or some kind of Olympic lifts if you want fully developed traps. That's a given. With that being said, there are three other exercises that I have found to give you the best bang for your buck if done properly with regards to trap development. And that's what I'm going to share with you here today. The first exercise is one of my all time favorites, and that is a single arm barbell shrug. And one of the main reasons why I love this exercise is because it forces you to check your ego at the door and lighten the load. You cannot go heavy in this exercise. And you might be thinking, have I lost my mind? Have I gotten soft? You know, you clicked on this video because you thought Joe D was gonna help you build massive traps. And the first thing I'm talking about is going light and lifting lighter weights. It sounds counterintuitive, but here's the deal. The number one problem I see, the number one mistake I see with lifters and trap development is they go way too heavy. How many times have you seen the, the skinny little guy with arms you know, skinnier than my wrists have four, five, six plates on a barbell, they're all strapped up, they're trying to do shrugs, they, they can't elevate their shoulders at all, so they just do what I call chicken head shrugs and they kind of bop their head back and forth to make it feel like they're doing something. They're actually moving. They're getting no trap recruitment whatsoever. They're just bopping their head back and forth and the weight is so heavy, they could barely hold onto it. So they're bobbing their head back and forth as quickly as possible to get the set over with. I would say the average 10 to 12 rep set of chicken head shrugs lasts about four seconds. And guess what? four second sets with zero range of motion ain't gonna lead to any kind of trap development. That's why so many people are walking around with poorly developed traps. So with the single arm barbell shrug, that ain't gonna happen, all right? You can't go heavy in this exercise because you won't be able to control the barbell. The key with single arm barbell shrugs is the ability to hold the barbell perfectly straight when you do your shrug. You don't want it to seesaw back and forth, all right? So you wanna hold it as straight as possible. And the key with this exercise is it allows you a greater range of motion compared to double-handed shrugs with your hands in front or dumbbell shrugs because with the dumbbells, they kind of rub against the outside of your thighs and, and it creates a little friction and you don't get as much range of motion as you do with this variation, all right? So you're getting an increased range of motion, an increased time under tension because you have to slow the reps down and really control the weight. And I even like to prescribe a two second pause in the contracted position. And that really kind of finishes this exercise off and makes it one of my all time favorites. So ju just to give you some practical application, I would suggest three to four sets, six to 12 reps each side, control the lowering and hold the contracted position for two seconds. 
All right, that is how I would incorporate these into your program. Side note, you could also incorporate single arm kettlebell shrugs. I also like single arm kettlebell shrugs just because of the, the nature of kettlebells with the handles. They, they also create a little less friction on the side of your body. So they're a little more comfortable than dumbbells, get a little greater range of motion. And you could overload that exercise a little bit more than the single arm barbell variation because the kettlebell isn't as long and awkward as the barbell. So we'll kind of put single arm barbell shrugs and single arm kettlebell shrugs together as our first exercise. Moving on to my second exercise, and it is one of my overall all-time favorite exercises, and that is the farmer's walk. If you want well-developed traps, you have to be incorporating farmer's walks into your programming, period. They are an all-star. And don't worry, there's a lot of debate over what's better. Should you do heavy, shorter farmer's walks, or should you hold lighter implements? and walk for longer distances. A lot of people debate and argue over which is better. D don't worry about what's better, what's worse. Nobody ever grew their traps worrying or debating. All right, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna get some trap development and what I found is a combination of both works the best and it's real easy to apply to your training. Here's what you do, regardless of the program you're on, I don't care if you do upper, lower splits, full body workouts, if you're on a bro type of body part split, doesn't matter. One day a week, finish your workout with heavy, shorter farmer's walks. I would recommend anywhere from 20 to 50 yards and four up to eight sets, giving yourself enough rest in between each set to recover so you could handle the heaviest weight possible. And just a little side note, don't go so heavy that, that you get all folded over and, and your posture is compromised. Go as heavy as you can while still being able to maintain neutral spine and good posture, all right? So that's the heavy day. On another day, later on in the week, you're gonna finish your workout by holding lighter kettlebells or dumbbells or whatever implement you have and going longer. And on this day, I would recommend anywhere from 60 second sets to up to three minute sets. All right, if, if you're familiar with our Strong Bastard 911 program, you know about our three minute farmer's walk finisher. It is brutal. We use a percentage of the lifter's body weight in each hand. It doesn't look like much on paper, but all you have to do is, is do it once and you realize how brutal it is. So if you're gonna go up to three minutes, all you need is one set. At the end of your workout, try to cover the most distance you can over the course of three minutes. If you're gonna do a 60 second set or up to two minute set, I would do two to three sets at the end of, end of your workout on your light day. If you could also, I'll just throw this in as a bonus, I, one of my favorite conditioning tools is the kettlebell mile where you hold light kettlebells, I would say 15 pounds for most people watching this. The heaviest I ever went was 36 pound kettlebells and you finish your workout by walking a mile with the kettlebells, trying to place them down and resting as few times as possible during the course of that mile. So that's just an example, some examples of what you can do on the light day, but combo of a heavy day and a light day with your farmer's walks works the best. And finally, I will round out the top three list with one of my all-time favorites, and that is face pulls. I, I love all kinds of face pulls. We use cables, we use bands. But they are one of the best mid-trap developers out there. Re remember, for full trap development, you don't want to neglect the mid-traps or the lower traps as well. But for the purpose of this video and a top three list, I got to throw face pulls in there as a, as a mid-trap developer. I personally do them up to five times a week. I think they're great. You can do more volume with the face pull. They're great for your posture and your shoulder health as well as trap development. 
So highly recommend throwing them into your programming. If you want a little extra twist, one of my favorite variations of this exercise is the band face pull apart. I refer to it as a face pull apart because you're not only pulling the band towards your face, you're also pulling it apart as well. So you get that dual action and, and greater activation. So I really love the, the band face pull apart for that mid trap development. If you never tried it, give it a shot. You, you will notice a real difference with that one. So hopefully you enjoyed this list. Hope you guys found it informative. If you liked it, I appreciate you giving the video a thumbs up. We're doing our best to try to grow this channel, continue to get the truth about training out there to as many people as humanly possible. So I appreciate your support. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of my future Joe Knows videos. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.